Right, so when discussing West Indies women of spinners, the names Hayley Matthews, Anissa Mohammed, and Yvonne Stefani Taylor comes to mind, it comes into conversation. But in recent times, there has been another player who has caught the attention of fans and pundits, and we're talking about Karishma Ramharak. The Trinidad and Tobago player has been a consistent feature in the Windies women's squad since making her debut in 2019. Karishma enjoyed a good tour of Pakistan, which ended last week, taking nine wickets from her seven games played. She joins us on set this afternoon for a chat. Good afternoon, how are you doing? I'm fine. Yeah, happy to have you on set, of course. And I think it's the first time that I get to interview you live in person. We normally do it on Zoom. Yes. All right, so let's start by, of course, reflecting on that Pakistan tour. Um, how was that for you? I think, um, you know, going there, it's somewhere, it's where I debut, especially the ground where I played all my matches on. So I was obviously kind of familiar with the conditions um, there already. Um, however, I didn't start the tournament well. My first game didn't go as planned. Yeah. But I think that, you know, um, with the experience I've had and speaking to my coach and Haley Matthews, you know, they really support me and they back me throughout the tournament. And I felt like, you know, um, they helped me with a little confidence booster going into the series. Yeah, and you know, you're known for, of course, taking wickets, bowling, um, very economical spells. But that particular match where it was dependent on you, of course, the team requ required three runs and it came down to you. Did you feel any sort of pressure and how relieved were you when you were able to hit that final ball for a four? A uh, funny thing, um, as I mentioned to everyone who speaks to me, I do a lot of more batting than I actually practice bowling. So, um, you know, given myself that position to go and get four and some one ball, I felt like no pressure. Um, it's either I hit the ball or I miss the ball. And, you know, it worked out well. Yeah. Um, just one more on the Pakistan tour before I pass you over to Ricardo, because I know he's, of course, itching. <laughs> to ask you a lot of questions. Um, you're, you're getting ready now after Pakistan is over. You're in a World Cup year, so a lot of work has to be done. Your next tour, of course, in Sri Lanka. Um, do you think you learned anything in Pakistan that you're looking forward to either fix when it comes to your bowling and batting or anything that you'll take away that will help push your game moving forward? Yeah, of course. I felt like um, in Pakistan I could have done a bit... Um, better in terms of you know being a bit more ec economical but i think our plans as a bowling unit has been really working well for the team mm -hmm. and uh, i wouldn't want to change much more than what we are working towards um, however i feel like every opportunity to improve is a great thing yes. so i'll definitely be working on every aspect of the game going there yeah over to you ricardo yeah you know since mariah <laughs> left off on your west indies exploits i'll just pick up there um, if I said I considered you to be a rather flat spinner, would you agree with that? Uh, yes, I would. I, and I ask you that question for a reason, right? So when I was growing up and I was playing high school cricket, um, whenever I would bowl off spin and I didn't fly the ball, I remember playing matches where my captain would take the ball from me because he said I wasn't flighting the ball enough. Um, did you ever get that coming through the system? I did, I would be very honest, but I'm not a typical off spinner. Yeah. I like to say that I'm a front on spinner, which I am. Yeah. I don't uh, end a decrease side on. Yeah. I actually have a really similar action to Sunil Narayan, which is quite interesting. It's yeah. mysterious and I feel like um, I wouldn't change it. Yeah. Um, how did you manage, I mean, those periods? Because I know sometimes um, especially as a developing player, you can start questioning yourself because um, you know that within yourself this can work and this is working, but then you're hearing this over there and that over there, and sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. How did you work through that? 
I feel like it's about knowing yourself and yeah. what you want to achieve as a player. Because what I've learned is that through the system, there are a lot of coaches that will come through, yeah. but you're going to be there <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> it's how you manage yourself and yeah. what you want to achieve as a player. And I felt like me personally investing in myself has really helped me. Yeah. And do you think that given where you are now and the strides that you've made in recent years, that that is vindication for that investment that you've placed in yourself? Yes, of course. I think, I think really and truly I've really put my mind down to, you know, um, taking this up as a serious profession and I, I feel like I'm able to reap the re rewards now. Yeah. How about that um, number 11 batting position? Oh, no, I don't bat 11. Yeah. I bat 10. <laughs> 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 my, my, my apologies. How about that number 10 batting position? Because, no, listen, I can, I can just imagine after you hit the, the winning runs um, with three to get off one ball and you get it to the boundary for four, that you go to the head coach and you go to Captain Haley and you're like, hey guys, listen, what's going on? Yeah, um, I think they thought I would have done that because of my um, eagerness to bat. Yeah. But uh, I feel like somebody has to do it at the back end, you know? <laughs> so I don't mind doing it if I can. Yeah. It's interesting that you say you do more batting in training than bowling, right? Because I remember the first time I saw you as a batter, the first thing that came to me is that your technical ability is pretty good, which is the foundation of batting. Um, of course, the rest of it is being consistently able to pierce the gaps and get the ball over the top. Where would you say you are now in the development of your batting? And seriously, do you see yourself any time in the future batting further up the order? Uh, personally, I felt like the position I bat right now, it's you have to get quick runs. Yeah. And the only way you can do that is if you, if you continue trying to hit the ball out of the park. Yes. I mean, it's not going to work every time you try. But I feel like I've developed a lot more shots in my game where I can find the gaps or, you know, score quick runs. And that has really helped me, you know, even with batting with um, Haley Matthews in one of the games, you know, she told me, you know, I was actually hitting the ball really well. Yeah. So she should have given me more strike. <laughs> and it was, it was funny because, I mean, she was on 100 and something. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, I've kind of grown a little bit more confident into, you know, playing more shots. Yeah. So, so is that to say that you don't want to go further up the order or you don't see yourself going further up the order and you're okay with that number 10 position? By the way, that's one spot from 11. It only takes one good innings from the number 11 and then you have a switch around. So be careful. Uh, I feel like um, I want to. It's been something that I've been working on. Yeah. But I mean, everybody have their roles on the team. Yeah. And whatever requires me, wherever they require me, I'll be happy there. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, closer to the juicy stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> first up, I do want to get a quick understanding, though, of, of what your start and development was like. And I like to ask this question of um, West Indies women cricketers just because of the system right across the Caribbean that hasn't always catered for the development of female cricketers. Well, I started off uh, obviously playing softball cricket. Mm -hmm. um, no foundation, I would obviously say. Because, Just a backyard thing? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So um, I did, in my later career, obviously started to learn the basics. And it obviously, you know, took a lot out of me. Uh, and opportunities were very little. Yeah. Um, because I didn't have that foundation. You know, so girls now has a lot more to look forward for because they are investing in themselves from a young age. It's a career now, so I feel like people are able to use that as an opportunity to start from young. Yeah. So when did you realize that there was an opportunity for you to, to take on cricket as a profession? And also when you realized that you had the ability to perform on the biggest stage in the women's game? I felt like it started off as a hobby, you know. Um, from a very young age, I used to play cricket with one of our uncles. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, my primary school teacher, she, she introduced me to the national teams. Oh. And I made the under-19s. She then, played in primary school, from primary school. Yeah, so from 
the national, making the national team, I was able to get eight wickets in a match. Mm. And from then on, it was like, yeah, I feel like it's easy. Yeah. And I started to play a lot more national cricket and club cricket. And from then on, I started to look further into the game. And people saw me and told me, you know, like, you have a natural talent. So. Yeah. Did you play a lot with boys? At all, no. No? None. Through, through the entire developmental process, not in primary uncle, school? Maybe once or twice, but not where it was a consistent thing. No. Yeah. Did you want to? I felt like early on, I was afraid of the ball, I'll be very honest, but now I'm, Me too. I'm, I'm, <laughs> quite, I'm quite happy to play if I get the opportunity with them. Yeah. Um, I, I have to ask you this one, um, because Mariah told us a story <laughs> Again, and I, <laughs> and I just could not believe the story that Mariah told. Really, I, I still don't believe. It's true. Um, which one? Mar He's oh my tell God! You. She says which He's one? He's gonna tell so you. So Mariah says that you were at a sports day, <laughs> my and sports she day. was supposed to run a race, and then you ran for her. Yeah. Do we look alike? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I did yeah, actually. She put it's on pretty my close shirt. actually. Now that I'm looking at it on the screen. Mm. Yeah, yeah, she ran for me. I got a medal. Did you win? <laughs> I got yeah. a medal. You came you, second. You came second. Did you give her the medal? Yes. Yeah. She had to wear it so her friends would know it was her. <laughs> her friends would think it was her. Yeah. Well, <laughs> take, yes. <laughs> Mara, are you proud of yourself? Very, very proud. I'm so happy to did have a she sister. Tell you, did she tell you about making the team under me as well? Oh yeah, she used to be my captain and I would always captain get... Captain at what? Cricket team. <laughs> and she would always but select me. But you weren't me. on the team. No, she selected me, but I school. would go in the shade, like where it didn't have too much sun and I didn't have to feel any of the ball. Mariah has been trying to make the Sports Max team for three years. Ricardo oh. is the captain, so that will not happen. <laughs> <laughs> Just telling the viewers. He's very biased. By oh, the, but there's a voice note for her. Yes. Um, Karishma, we have a voice note for you. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hi, I wanted to know from Karishma, what is her advice to young athletes um, that aspire to be not only a cricketer, but a woman cricketer? I know sometimes it's a little bit hard, um, the sports in general, you know, um, or anything that is a male-dominated field. What is her advice to women that are interested in becoming a cricketer or any athlete? I think right now it's probably one of the best things or the best opportunity you will have as a cricketer. I know I'm not just separating female and male now because I feel like Cricket has grown tremendously for females yeah. and it's a career, it's something that you can use as a profession yeah. and you get money out of it. You get, you have a comfortable living. Yeah. Um, I would say and as the year go, years go on, it's going to even get better. I feel like I need to kind of go back in time <laughs> where I can actually get the rewards, but I'm really happy to still be playing in this time. Yeah, we have one more voice note, but before we take that quickly, um, talking about making a living, do you make more than I, Mariah? <laughs> we don't, you know, we don't I talk don't, about that. I don't know how much Mar Mar Mariah we don't, you don't. She doesn't tell you? That's a funny thing. We don't have conversations like that because people always ask Maybe me how I much should she ask makes. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't, you know, and we're so close, but we don't speak about financial things like that. We motivate each other. We have a different type of relationship, but no, Ricardo, we don't talk about money. That's so sweet. Let's get this voice note. <laughs> My name is Kim. I am like Karishma's, I hope I pronounced her name correctly, biggest fan. She's actually my favorite West Indies cricketer. So I'm so happy to see her on the zone today to actually ask her a question to get a direct um, response. Um, I wanted to know what does she do like before her matches to get prepared for it? Not like physically because I follow her and Instagram and stuff and I see that she's always putting in the work always in the gym. I absolutely love her legs Oh my god, but what does she do? Like mentally like to get ready for her games um, Sri Lanka, I know it's coming up um, What is she doing to get ready mentally for that? <laughs> I don't oh, usually she, get so many That voices. fan got me um, She took me off Off by a bit <laughs> um, <laughs> What was the question? <laughs> what, what do you do to get mentally prepared oh, for I your matches? <laughs> um, 
really and truly, I feel like once I have a good sleep, yeah. I, you, you know, I tend to function day. well. Um, so have a good breakfast, you know, get my uh, pretty much workout in, and then you know have a good warm up. Yeah. Once I warm up well, I think um, you know, and to get the muscles and the blood flowing, yeah. I think I'll have a good game. I think you missed out. I mean, bad. Kirishma is very spiritual. Yeah. She doesn't start her day without listening to the Hanuman Chalisa, which is um, a very powerful prayer in our religion. Yeah. Like I wake up now, she's staying with me, and we're opening the day with the Hanuman Chalisa, and I think that's a big deal, you know, yeah. to have that spiritual connection as well. It is. I think so as well. Um, Quickly, because apparently we're out of time, mm -hmm. um, in terms of that whole preparation and especially from a mental standpoint for matches and performances, um, so I play a little amateur tennis, right? And whenever I'm getting ready for a match, there comes a point where I don't want to speak to anybody. Like my AirPods are in um, and I'm in a zone where I'm just focused on what I want to do. Do you ever get to that stage or are you the type that's more free-spirited and <laughs> you're chatting right up to the point and laughing right up to the point that you go out to perform? Well, truthfully, I'm not really a chatty, chatty person, but um, I know a lot of players who actually does that. And yeah. one of my really good friends, Stephanie Taylor, is basically just like what you described. You're joking. No, she is. She <laughs> is. And uh, Stuff strikes me as the complete opposite. Really? Yeah. Oh no! A match day, she yeah. is zoned in. Oh, the zoned in yeah. part. Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry, yeah. my bad. I you thought, thought you were saying she was the chatty part. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I was. I mean, like that. she's exactly what you described yeah. for yourself. yourself. Yeah. Okay. And I, I really admire that about her. Well, I what think. about you? Um, I am also very, you know, focused on yeah. the day. I don't think I'm involved in any jokes. So, I mean, on a normal day, <laughs> I'll make my own jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but truthfully, I, I believe that once I have a good warm up and I, you know, get myself into the match, match ready zone, yeah. I think um, I like to be alone at sometimes as well. Yeah. Well, it's great that you could join us on this zone. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very In much, Karishma. Zone. In my zone. Break time. <laughs> <laughs>